Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Wolverine Studios uh, channel here on Twitch. We are excited to be back with the developer Dynasty this evening. And today we are going to take a look at Draft Day Sports Pro Basketball 2024. It's your first look at our new version of our Pro Basketball Sim coming later on this year. Uh, as you guys know, we have College Football 2024 that is now available. Uh, you can buy that both on our website and at Steam. And you can also download a free demo if you haven't checked it out yet uh, at WolverineStudios.com. So we are going to be moving into our pro season now that we have college football out. And uh, we've got pro basketball and pro football uh, coming on the way. College basketball, uh, for anybody who doesn't know in our game release schedule, that will launch later in the new year in 2024. But uh, we're talking about pro basketball tonight, so I've been looking forward to doing this stream. I'm going to spend about a half hour here just going through some of the things. You can see the new main menu screen there, and I'm going to load up a league I had started here so we can take a look at some of the new things. If you have any questions, feel free to use the chat. Let me put that in there. I will do my best to answer any of them, and if you have suggestions, uh, feel free to throw those out in the chat as well. Uh, I'm always happy to take suggestions, and uh, that's uh, kind of how the, the game has evolved into what it is. It's, it's really been based on everybody offering some really cool suggestions over the years. So as you can see, if you are not, uh, if you are familiar with the game, we are looking at a brand new interface again. Uh, we've kept the, the dark theme, but totally have redone the interface just as we did in college football and we'll do in our other games. So let's take a look at this uh, real quick. You can see one of the, the really cool features here is on the bottom of the screen now, there is a news ticker that will be going. And you can see, um, you know, kind of the, the scores from the previous day. There'll be major news stories uh, that break down there. So as you're going through you know, your league, you can always be checking up on that. This dashboard screen, I, I think, is I really like how this has come out. It's giving you a whole lot of information now at a glance. You can see uh, where your team is uh, in the standings. You can check out your next opponent. Uh, you can check out the, the best player on the next opponent. It gives you your win chance as well. You can click the button and go to their team page. You get to see the matchup stats about that next game. Your team news is listed here. That's been done a little bit. All your team leaders, you can click through here and see who are your, your leaders in points, assists, rebounds, blocks, and steals. Your player impact estimate chart is still here. Uh, and at the bottom, a lot of helpful information. If you're missing the player cards that used to be on here, you can click this view team button and that will pop up the player cards, and you can just click away from it. Um, an overall view of your team morale, so that you know if you've got issues that need to be handled. Uh, if there's any injuries, it will list them here. It lists your upcoming draft picks, so you always know kind of where you stand on that, as well as the number of expiring contracts you have and the amount of projected cap space you will have. At the top, you will see all of your team uh, information things, a dashboard, staff, roster, stats, contract, depth, strategy, insights, schedule, team info, and history. Down the left side, you've got your different league information areas uh, on the, the upper part here and on the lower part, all of your information and actions for uh, you as the player in the game. I'm going to click over the office. Um, this is just a fictional league I just started up just so we can kind of take a look at things tonight. Uh, you can see what your job goals are for player spend, staff spend, the success that your owner is asking for, and uh, the roster demands. You've also got uh, your inbox, your meetings. Uh, again, from last year, if you didn't check out last year's version, we added the ability to have press conferences, uh, which help you to level up uh, on your badge level and help you level up your character as the general manager in the, in the game. The ability to trade, sign free agents, uh, alerts, notepads, and key dates in the game. 
One of the things you'll see missing over here is the team drop down box. We've replaced that just like we did in college football with the ability to just bring up all the teams at a glance. You can switch between the D League and the Pro League. And this way, great use of the logos, really clean, really easy to see, really easy to find the team that you're looking for. I think Phoenix is our next opponent, so I'll just click on them for a second. And uh, you can go right to, you know, to, to any screen you want. So if you're, you know, if you're on the roster screen, you're seeing, you know, who they have. Uh, you can click the teams button and switch around. You can also always click your logo on the left side to switch back to your own team, so you don't have to go do the teams and then select your team. You can always just click your logo and you'll go back to where you are. Uh, so one of the big things you're going to see on the screen that's brand new is uh, in the overall section here, we have numbers. I have added an option for you to have either the, the old view where you have a star rating of the player, three star, four star, stuff like that, or uh, because it's been requested over time, the ability to have an overall rating. So I have one player here, my best player says this, Tobias Ivener. A 97 overall. So I'm going to click this. You can see on the player card that the overall will come up. Uh, also, I've added, uh, you know, kind of some cool effects throughout the game that you're going to find, like on the player card heading here. Uh, you know, just things to kind of liven the game up a little bit, get some extra movement in there. But this new overall rating will be available to you. So you have the option to play with uh, those overall ratings or using the old star system whichever uh, you prefer there. Now let's take a look around at some of the other things. You can see on the roster screen here, um, you know, we, we put a lot of little light bulb help options throughout the game to kind of uh, make sure that you, under, you, know, you understand what's going on in that screen. Try to give more help things uh, here where you know, it tells you that you have 14 out of 15 roster spots filled, but you are required to have 12. You can click on this uh, this square here to see your affiliate team, you know your your D League team. You can click to go back. Um, you know a, a lot of helpful things like this on, on the contract screen. And again, more helpful things being able to if it's too much information to put in a little area like down here in the corner. Uh, I've added things that will pop up and tell you all of the. You know exactly what things mean so if you're not totally familiar with uh you know the, the pro basketball contract schedule uh you can get help there the contract page is all color coded as you can see so you have your normal contracts you can see who's coming up with team options uh who you know when players are going to be unrestricted free agents if you go back to that dashboard screen uh you say we have six expiring contracts coming up so you'll, you'll be able to go here and see quickly that, you know, four of these guys are unrestricted free agents and two of them we have a team option for. So we can hang on to those two if, uh, if we want to easily by picking up that option and the other four would be unrestricted free agents. And you can you know, easily, clearly see all this stuff, uh, you know, right from this screen. And I think that's going to be a big improvement uh, as well, especially for people who don't totally understand uh, you know the, the contract thing which it, you know it can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes because of the bird rights and all that kind of stuff um, this is a fictional league so it's restarted there's nobody who has uh, contract actions but if you if you highlight a player you know their option will come up uh, if there's anything you can do with them like offer them an extension or pick up a rookie option things like that um, so, so that'll be very intuitive as well One of the uh, the big new features that I want to talk about, let's go over the standings page. One of the big new additions to the game this year is going to be the addition of the in-season tournament. Uh, if you're not familiar with that in the NBA, they are instituting an in-season tournament for the NBA Cup, which is going to put teams into uh, five or six groups of five teams each, they're going to play in that system, and then they're going to eventually move into a tournament and declare an in-season tournament winner. 
that's going to be modeled exactly uh, like it is in this game. So you're going to have uh, in each division, in each conference, there's going to be three divisions in the east, three in the west, and five teams that are drawn for each group. The drawings are going to work the same way. It's going to have the same system where they take the, the top three teams from last season record-wise, and one goes into group A, one goes into group B, one goes into group C. Then the next three, four, five, and six, one goes into A, one goes into B, one goes into C. So it's, it's set up the same way. Each group plays every team once in their group, and then the winner of each group plus one wild card team from each side makes this single elimination tournament at the end. It's if you haven't read the rules and how it works, it's a little weird, but you'll get used to it. So the same thing will be mod it would be modeled here in the game. For smaller leagues, it's not going to be an option to have the in-season tournament just for the 30 team league and then probably I'll work it out for the 32 team league, but it's really difficult to <laughs> to come up with this because of the schedule. So let me pull up the schedule here and kind of explain this a little bit more. In the schedule, you have certain dates in the month of November, and they're, uh, they have this trophy icon on here, so you can tell which games are the in-season tournament qualifying games. So you, you have to play those games. You have to have those games scheduled in. And then you're going to notice that there's a gap in the schedule where this thing moves from this round robin in season thing to a tournament. The tournament games also, for the most part, count as regular season games. So everybody has an 80 game schedule and then they're going to get additional games added in based on whether or not they made this tournament. So I'm going to go over here and uh, during the season, you'll be able to click show tournament and it will show you uh, the tournament. I'm going to simulate games so we can kind of see real quick the tournament. The tournament games, just like in real life, will be played on the, I think it's Tuesdays and Fridays or something like that in November. So this is, everything's modeled the exact same way. And you're going to have the opportunity to, um, you know, have this in-season tournament and, and see, uh, you're going to you play those four games. And, you know, the results of those four games will count both towards your regular season record and also this in-season tournament. I know some people aren't crazy about that idea in the NBA. I guess we'll see. Uh, it, it's very much like a soccer uh, style thing. So we'll, we'll see how it works out. But because it's in real life, we put it in the game. You'll see the league news over here. It's kind of been uh, freshened up. And it looks a lot better than it did before. Uh, also on the top, you have uh, your... It'll tell you if you have injured players. So you can go and check that out. Uh, the tournament is not set yet. Oh, we got to finish November. Okay, so now the tournament should be set. So there's eight teams who made the tournament. We actually made the tournament, it looks like. Um, and then you play a single elimination tournament. The semifinals and finals are held at a neutral site, which also will be reflected in the game. Uh, but if you go back to the standings, you'll be able to see the in-season tournament groups. So the winner of each group and then the next best team from each conference are the eight teams that advance to this. All the other 22 teams who didn't make it then get rescheduled into having two more regular season games against the other teams that didn't make it. And the losers in the first round then play a loser game so they get their second game. So it's the first round and the second round games count as regular season games as well. So that's that's why there's only 80 scheduled to start with. So if you are somebody who's editing the schedule and you want to make your own schedule, there's going to be a little bit of extra work and tricks there. And we'll try to help uh, anybody who wants to do custom schedules and stuff like that. But that will be uh, something new that you'll have to deal with now in the game. But I, I think it's a, it's 
it, it'll be a fun addition. And then when you go to the Almanac, you'll be able to eventually, once there's data there, be able to click on the champions, and the champions will list both the league champions as well as the in-season uh, tournament champions. And the same thing will be true on your uh, team information page. You'll be able to come through here and click and see, you know, any years you've won uh, in you know the in-season cha championship, as well as all the other awards. So we've, we've freshened up this page again, um, you know, kind of making it look better, make it more useful. You'll have retired numbers, title seasons, all this kind of data down there. And the, the data is really just one of the strongest points in the game because once you get multiple seasons in, um, you know, it's fun to see all of that history uh, that's stored there. And again, if you're playing in the 2023 version, you'll be able to upgrade uh, your league and bring it over to 2024. It, your league will, by default, have the tournament option turned off. But uh, let's see, where is the option? I think it's, I don't know if it's on this screen or another one. Shimmer's office. Um, maybe I didn't put it on here yet. But in one of the screens, you'll be able to, oh, that's right, I'm sorry. The ability to turn the tournament on and off will be there every season for you playing in these 30 or 32 team leagues. So when and it gets to the point where it asks you to set the schedule, you'll be able to choose whether you want to use the in-season tournament. So if you have an old league from 23 and you bring it in, you'll be able to add the in-season tournament as long as you're using a 30 team league. And, uh, and and if you don't want to play with it, if you think it's you know a dumb idea that the you know that, that has been added into real life, then you can choose to ignore it as well here and just keep on going uh, without it. I'm going to show off the press conference feature in case anybody's missed it before. Um, so this is useful in building up your character's experience and helping you level up your ratings and things like that. So it asks you some random questions. We're going to try to add some more questions into the game this year and, and kind of give you, um, you know, more of that. He's, uh, this says Tobias Ivaner is an interesting young player. Are you happy with his progress? And again, based on your answer, it affects the player as well as, um, you know, other team things. So I'm going to say that I'm very happy with him. And you get immediate feedback from the, the player itself. And you can choose to have another question. You can exit the press conference. Um, so this is Myron Delord has really got this team playing well. How important are they to the success the team has had so far? Uh, you know, I'll just tell you, he's done a nice job for us. He's our uh, head coach. Uh, and we get a response that most of the team has a positive reaction and appreciation for the coach, while those who don't get along with you are suspicious of the coach being on your side of things. Um, again, so that's every question has a, a reaction that could happen with uh, the players and stuff like that. You know, they, they may not be happy with, you know, things you have to say. One more addition that has been uh, constantly asked for is on the, the, a couple of years ago, we added this personality type into the game, which I, I think has been really useful and if you look at the staff report uh, you, you've, you've had a, a a thing with the uh the friendly relationships and the questionable relationships but a lot of people kind of had difficulty uh you know figuring out what they do why things are like that so now if you click on here on this question mark you're going to get a uh, ability to pull up the different personality types get a description of it, get an interaction with it, and see, you know, kind of who they work well with or don't work so well with. If you don't want to do this and you want to just learn and, and do by trial by error and stuff like that, you don't have to click on the screen. But for those who have struggled with the personality types over time, this will be, I think, really important and useful for you. You'll be able to pull it up and, um, and, and see what the different options are. Uh, elsewhere around the league, again, as you go to different screens, you're going to see all of these screens uh, have been redone to, again, 
emphasize important things, help you understand what uh, different options are doing better so that you can better understand the, uh, you know, the, the functions of items in the game. I know people have asked me about defensive things and I, I don't think they've spent enough time on the strategy page because there are options and have been for you to be able to, you know, set specific defensive instructions for players in terms of, you know, who you want your primary defenders to be, what you want them to be doing, even if you want them on a game by game basis to be defending specific players, you can do that on the screen. So definitely you want to check this out and you also want to check out these offensive strategies because this is really important in how your team plays and the style that you want because, you know, people ask, well, why can't I tell one guy to do, you know, I want him to shoot 53s a game. I mean, that, that's not a realistic thing, but these changing the strategies give you those options for your team uh, to be able to use different areas of the floor more often, to be able to use different types of offensive actions and different pace. Uh, you know, if you want a really fast pace offense, use a seven seconds offense. It's going to take the first decent shot uh, they get. So all of these features are here and we're probably going to, I'm probably going to try to do something maybe on our YouTube channel where we have maybe more tutorials or um, a, kind of a, a, a let's play where I get into depth on describing some of these things. But, um, and if you have questions about certain things and want to see specific topics, let me know uh, because I'll, I'll be happy to do videos. But these things are here and you're definitely going to want to use them and, and, you know, again, look at the, the help information boxes that I provided here. And, you know, so you better understand, um, you know, what exactly is going on with some of these options and how you can use that uh, to, you know, benefit your team. Now let's take a look at the chat box real quick. Uh, Ribbons of Distinction says, I think our star players shouldn't have to practice. I mean, we're talking about practice. Q, uh, Alan Iverson, that would be a fun thing for the press conference. I could add in. Um, first time chat, welcome, Factor X462 Import NBA Rosters. Yes, absolutely. We have a mod community that does fantastic stuff. They've got uh, rosters. They've got face packs. They've got logos. All that stuff could be used in 2023. It'll be used the same way in 2024. Um, and Gooms love seeing this game grow. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Positionist basketball is asked by uh, Ribbons of Distinction. That kind of exists to a degree. I mean, on the depth chart page, if, if that's what you want to do, you have the ability to, you know, when you make your, your sub matrix, you have the ability to, you know, assign players to any position. Um, you could assign them all as eligible at any position. And then if you're not coaching a specific game, the AI would just use the next guy in line of the depth chart and, and try to match them up as best you can. And, I, you know, the, the game is moving more towards that way where there's fewer, um, you know, especially in terms of centers, um, you know, a fewer post, strictly post, you know, centers with power forwards. Um, so the, the game kind of does reflect that, but I, I do think it's it's still, a, you know, for organizational sake and things like that, still good to have the labels of, you know, point guard or small forward or whatever. But really, if you want to do position list, you can do it because you can, you can make a player eligible at every position like I'm doing here on the screen on the bottom. And you could put him anywhere you want in uh, in your you know your sub matrix and your depth chart, so you can do it if you want to, um, you know, and, and the the AI will handle that properly. So if you if you take a player who is a very poor ball handler and you you know you put him in the point guard spot, there's still going to be a point guard who's responsible for handling the ball mostly. Um, he won't perform well. Uh, just as you, you take him and you put him in an, you know, a, a strictly post player and you take him and put him in an offense, um, you know, like this, this guy, our backup center, 77% prefers to be in a post, you know, and he's going to zero drive and pass, 1% drive and shoot, 
he wants to be a post up back to the basket player. You know, if you put him in an offense where everybody's on the perimeter and everybody's slashing and driving, he's going to perform poorly because he doesn't have the skills to do that. So that's why the, the floor range and the ball actions by percentage are so key. And it's, it's so unique in this game that you don't just look for the overall rating and determine that's a good player, that's a bad player. You have to look at what the player does, how does he fit what your scheme is, how does he fit your team, you know, how does he fit the other players on the team, personality-wise, as well as his game. There's so much to building a team. That that's, that's the real challenge in the Draft Day Sports Pro Basketball 2024. Um, that was a lot of talking. Um, you know, there's a lot more new stuff. Like I said, we're going to keep this short and, and wrap it up here in a minute unless there's any other questions because, you know, we want to kind of unveil this stuff slowly over time. But uh, there's new additional things to the game. The draft has been revamped. It's got a new look. Um, if you're using the in-season tournament, I've created an in-season tournament draw. So if, you, if you're familiar with, um, you know, some of the, the European soccer leagues, you may have a, a draw to see which teams are playing and, you know, which groups and stuff like that, or for the World Cup, you know, all that kind of stuff. There's going to be that in the game as well. So you'll have kind of the excitement of seeing, you know, what, you, what your pool is and, and what you end up with for the, the in-season tournament in the next season, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, that'll be a brand new thing. There's you know, a lot of other, um, you know, quality of life tweaks, uh, you know, things like this ticker down here. It's, it's giving you information about what's going on in your league without you having to go, you know, and, and search it out. You can always go to the league news and, and see what's going on here. We've got power rankings. We've got the, you know, the players who are winning you know, league awards, the league injury report. And you can always click on, you know, these player names so that you can, you know, see the information about them on their player card. Everywhere it's, you know, lit up, there's always uh, the ability to click on, you know, the player and, and find out more about him. So that is, uh, that's going to do it for tonight. Again, we're just keeping this short, kind of just a first look. So you can kind of get a look at the new thing and maybe get some ideas going in your head for, you know, things that we've talked about here, things that you saw, things that you feel might be cool additions on top of that. Uh, so much more to come. Obviously, we're, we don't have, you know, release information or stuff like that yet. That'll be coming soon as well. But I wanted to give everybody a first taste of what's coming in basketball this year because obviously they've seen what's happened in college football 2024. They saw some of the new stuff there. I wanted you to see it uh, on the basketball side as well as, you know, start soliciting any last minute suggestions or feedbacks or ideas that uh, that you might have. If you want to share any of those with me, we've got our forums, we've got our Discord, we've got the Slack channel, we've got Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. We're all over the place. Um, you know, hit us up in any of those things. Let me know uh, kind of what you're looking forward to or what you like the best out of what you saw here tonight. Uh, don't forget, you can check out a replay of this on our Twitch channel. And we also always put our stream on our YouTube channel. So make sure uh, you're following us on Twitch and you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Uh, both of those things are free to do. Uh, you can also subscribe to our Twitch channel if you uh, if you want to and have the opportunity to do that. I think you can still get a free sub if you're an Amazon Prime member. Uh, you can do a free monthly sub here, and that uh, helps us out. We've got one, uh, one more question I'll take by Ribbons of Distinction. Breakout players that get better unexpectedly, like Mark Cannon last year. Um, yes, but it's not a random... Thing. Let me pull up a roster here real quick so you can look at this. It's not a, a random thing. There, there is a hidden boom bust feature in the game. So some players do get, you know, a random boost or a seemingly random boost as well as, you know, they just don't ever develop to what you thought they would be. So it works both ways. It also happens from injury where players... Uh, they come back from an injury and they're not as good as they were if it was a significant injury. So that can happen. And there's also an opportunity, I guess, improvement. So sometimes it's just the wrong, it's the wrong strategy. It's the wrong teammates, stuff like that. So 
moving a player to a new situation, giving him more opportunity, giving him you know a structure that fits him better. And I think that was really kind of key for Laurie last season with the Jazz. Um, you know, much bigger opportunity than he had before. Uh, a system that you know featured him, a system that gave him more opportunity, um, different teammates. So I, that also plays a role here, which is goes back to what I said before about building your team and looking for you know specific players that will fit based on you know their you know their floor ranges and their ball actions. Finding the right players who work together, and it, it, he's not necessarily you know way better of a player as he was before as he's being used a lot differently and giving a lot more opportunity. So that is absolutely part of the game here. Uh, it, it, that's why, you know, the overall rating is new. If you don't like the star system and you want that overall number, I've kind of hesitated to do that for a long time, but I went ahead and added it this year as an option. So, you know, for people who want to see that, but you can't just rely on overall number means great player. Or a poor overall number means not a very good player at all. That's true to some degree, but it's it's about the fit with the rest of the team. And I think that is the the number one uh, best feature in this game is that you have to build a team. You don't just collect high overall players and win. So thank you guys for the chat. I really appreciate it. I thank you guys for coming out and, and taking a look here at the stream tonight. Uh, we'll have more information soon. And like I said, maybe I'll start up a Let's Play on our YouTube channel so you can kind of see everything in action and uh, also be able to use that as a helpful you know, tips and tutorial type thing for, for new players or players who have been around a long time and we just don't, uh, just don't understand everything that's happening. That, that's always a, a, a possibility too. So thanks again. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels uh, and make sure you're following us on our socials so that you uh, get the latest updates on this as well as our other games coming out. We'll have Pro Football 24 information uh, and news soon as well. So we're looking forward to a big fall here at Wolverine Studios. Thanks guys for coming out and we'll talk to you soon.